Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today, I have two wonderful guests from the Royal Plant-Based Esselstyn family. It's not Jane and Anne, it's not Essie and Rip. These are the two secret Esselstyns that nobody has known about until today. Well, some people have, but maybe you have, and I certainly did not know about them, but there are two more amazing Esselstyns in the Esselstyn family. They have an amazing business they're gonna tell you all about. They're also plant-based and awesome. Please welcome to the show, Zeb and Ted. Esselstyn, where have they been keeping you guys? <laughs> in the woodshed, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> literally in the woodshed because you actually work with wood yeah that's right yeah we do and thanks for having us yeah uh, we're delighted to be here and um it's kind of fun being the unknown esselstyns yeah. uh <laughs> because i guess we can impress easier than we can mm -hmm. fall but anyway we, we uh we're delighted to be here and i think zeb made an interesting observation uh is that when you talked about the idea that what we do, uh, uh, and maybe we should talk first about what we actually yeah, do. Yeah, well, well, why don't you, we, she can let us. Right, well, the thing is, I actually did know that, that Anna and Essie had four kids, it's just, and I've heard you mention, I've known your names, but I've, I've obviously never met you. You don't live in Cleveland with, or, or in Austin, right? Where the other Esselstyns live. Nope, we're in Connecticut. Wow. <laughs> in, but, um, but you were raised in Esselstyn, so my guess is you probably eat really well, you probably exercise, you probably are, are, are fans of the plant-based diet, even though maybe you're not directly promoting it like your siblings. Oh yeah, we oh. were raised in the, in the exact same, uh, at the same table as Jane and Rip, and um, you know, Rip is my older brother by 11 months, and Jane is just a year younger than me, and Zeb is the baby of the family. So yeah, we know we're all true believers in plant-based eating, and um and but i got the brunt of it because i was the one who was still living at home when they, everything changed when we were you know back in the early, mid 80s yeah. so i i was i was there for the transition and uh i fought that initially very hard <laughs> that's so interesting so you were like the the, the renegade or the rogue esselstyn because you, you you initially didn't go along well i mean i was still eating at home so it was the only thing i was fed so maybe it was easier for you in some way. Your mom's oh, a fantastic. Okay. Your mom's a yeah. fantastic cook. Was she a fantastic cook before you guys went plant based? Oh yeah, but we were always on the edge of being un the unusual. Yeah, we leaders. were always like the we were all food. the really health food. You know, the brand went into everything. Uh, you know, my mom made her own gr own granola in the mornings. She was always um, making her own stuff. So we were always on that edge of being uh, considered a little bit marginalized that's the way we ate um as, as a friend of ted's actually said like your your, your refrigerator is always full but there's nothing to eat <laughs> that's hilarious it's sort of like now there's there's so much on tv but there's nothing to watch yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> that is so funny so you were you were still at home that is so interesting and you all went on to raise all your kids that way. I mean, it's an amazing how this family has all gotten on board because so many people believe it or not struggle I think it was easy for us to internalize it. You know, my, when my dad made the, <clears throat> began his research, you know, we'd all been athletes, we we're, ath were all athletes. And at that time we were all swimmers. And I think looking for ways to improve our performances as athletes, um, it was easy to look to diet. And, you know, it's not hard to believe my dad when he looks you in the eye and, uh, you know, it was, it made sense to us all. So I think as athletes, we, took it on mm -hmm. and we were all in college Zeb was still in high school at that time um so for me it really it was a piece of cake I remember I used to gain some weight in and out of the season training season and uh you know switching to plant-based it was just steady eddy from there on out uh which I think helped me a lot and even into adulthood you know it's been been mm -hmm. great and we still we believe me the currency of the realm is still uh endurance athletics and going after each other yeah so um it's a lot of fun. <laughs> One thing I noticed about the whole family is you guys seem a little bit competitive. Are you are you both competitive and competitive with each other? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. No doubt. <laughs> but you know, the beautiful thing is oh, only in a good ways. Yeah, the competition just <laughs> it provides for banter and fun. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people I think shy away from the idea of competition, but for us, it's for me, it's an invite. I love it because yeah. you know, you, one day you'll win, the next day you'll lose. But if you can laugh about it and walk away from it uh, and be energized for the next time. Yeah. 
Like, Absolutely. like you guys have little competitions with like a, like a blood pressure cuff to see who has the lowest blood pressure, <laughs> lowest cholesterol, those kind of things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Why not? <laughs> like, I don't know if you know this, but like, I mean, people love your whole family, but like your dad, he's like an icon and like it, to him, is he just dad to you or do you like, is he, you know, what we, like people see him at conferences on the cruises and he's like larger than life, but to you, is he just, but it's, it's nice to see it happening because it's, you know, for so long, there was, I mean, I remember when he heard, he got his first results and I remember thinking, oh, this is, people are going to just be amazed, you know, with a re reversal. And I was just so surprised when even, yeah, he just, mm. there was, there was, it was, there was, it wasn't, the world didn't change, you know, it just, nobody changed. And, you know, it's diet is, is people don't like to tell, be told what to eat. Yeah. You know, I think there's somebody that wants to join this broadcast that might know you a little bit better than Let's like hear good things about their bad habits, their bad habits. Yeah. 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 People want good news. I, I think so. Who's going to join us? Well, I don't know. Are you there? Yeah, not this. Oh, my God. Let's see if they're there. Sometimes it works. Some... What's on your mug, by the way? I, it seems like there's. Oh, right this is funny. So this is uh, Zeb when he turned 50, he had a party and. So that's Zeb dressed up in uh, rugs from our house. And yeah. <laughs> this is Zeb in like third grade or something. My, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the that's other so, side is Zeb is 50. That is amazing. So you guys do something for a living that's different than your siblings. You want, you want to talk about that? And maybe even show, you said you might want to show some pictures. I don't know if you have the opportunity to screen share or we'll just refer people to your website. Um, well, we, um, we started a business called City Bench. And it was really born out of the idea of using the trees from the urban forest. And a lot of people haven't even heard the term, had heard of the term, the urban forest. Um, but in our cities and urban centers around the country, there are thousands of trees that come down each year and they're typically mulched or landfilled um, and considered, they're just part of the green waste stream. So we're tapping into that and using this underutilized resource, these urban trees, beautiful trees, mature trees that line our streets, parks, um, that are being taken down every year due to storm damage, construction, disease. Um, so that's really the crux of it. And the whole idea is to make beautiful objects with these trees and put them back in the buildings, uh, yeah. you know, in the city and where they came from. And we also work with developers and institutions and private clients uh, who, you know, institutions who have to take trees down to build a new building. And then we put those, you know, the trees they took down back into the building and also with private, private clients. Yeah, you know, we will put um, you know, we'll build dining tables for a high school from trees that had to come down when they renovate the high school or in a college or in a business. Mm -hmm. Lots of homeowners, you know, homeowners making legacy pieces to pass on to their children. Mm -hmm. If they've got a, you know, believe me, when you're making objects to imbue an object with meaning is everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we have we have clients literally crying in front of us, you know, we might make something for someone who's gone, someone who's died. We might make something so that someone can remember a home or a, um, yeah. a time or a place. So it really is really meaningful to connect with these people and design with them. Um, yeah, and just I'll, I'll, I'll. do things differently too. Okay, I'm and People ahead. love to come see us working. They, yeah. People love to come to the shop and see all of us who are involved with City Bench, you know, actually doing the work. Come to the <laughs> mill and seeing us mill these huge logs with, you know, big machinery and, uh, and then come watch us build, build the furniture in the shop. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, I, 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 did, I, want, I didn't want to ruin the surprise, but your mom is in the waiting room, but for some reason she's not starting her video. So Anne, if you can hear me, I, there she is. Hey, Anne, do you recognize these two people? Yeah, but what I, I I'm, I'm going to just come and go, but while they're talking, you gotta tilt. You're, you gotta you're tilt. tilt your camera a little, Anne, because your head's cut off. Just, I, I like that. I like it. <laughs> but the thing is, AJ, I wanted to show you one of the amazing things they've made here in our kitchen at the farm. Yeah. Ted, would you, Zeb or Ted, do you want to tell about the? So yeah. we're, we're, yeah. Could you, could you, could you show us? We'd love to see I'll it. Show it, but let them tell them. Well, Anne is at the. She's at the farm in upstate New York, and um, there's a, something we call the Tank House Hill on the farm which is an interesting, our uh, great grandfather, at a time they pumped the water up onto the tank house, up into a tank on top of the hill uh, with windmills so that it was gravity fed uh, when it 
when the spigots were open down below, all the water drained and was gravity fed into the various buildings. But in that, by that old tank house on top of the hill grew this elm tree. And it's sort of an iconic little image for all of us uh, of a little house on top of this very steep hill with a single tree next to it. Uh, and when that elm tree died, uh, Zeb and ago. I, yeah, a couple of years ago, you can tell. Yeah, you know, we just, we, we, we went and cut it up, brought it back to our mill and made this large island around the kitchen that we did recently at the, at the farm. But for us, it was a nice chance for us yeah. to do for ourselves what we've been doing for clients for so long, which is really take something yeah. special, this tree, and, uh, and allow, it to live, allow it to live on. Yeah, no, we can see. Yeah. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there it is. And there's Essie. <laughs> yeah, and, and you got to be talking for us to see it, though. We can see it, but for the viewers to see, your voice has to activate soon. All right. Activate, activate. Here is <laughs> amazing amazing aisle and look all the things you can put underneath it <laughs> there's, a, there's drawers on this end and it's just so beautiful where's the car where's it well say hi all right i just wanted to say that and now i'm gonna have to go well and thank you bye. Bye. bye nice to see you we'll see you, we'll see you later <laughs> wow see you later. You're keeping them from dinner tonight, AJ. You know, I, I, they picked this day a long time ago. I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll try to, I'll, I'll hurry it up for you, Anne. Thank you. For, thanks for stopping by. It was nice to see you. That is a beautiful piece. So you do custom things for people. Exclusively, almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's wow. Mainly but is it, is it, so it's just furniture, though. Like, you know what? One of the things I love is chopped salads. Do you ever make those bowls for people to chop their salad in? We've done bowls, but yeah, we don't. We aren't bowl turners. That's an interesting so, idea. Chopping yeah. bowls. I've never actually. Yeah. I mean, it's you a, mean like to, to for your for your salad, like that the little thing to cut it up. Yeah. So so we want people to eat more vegetables. Like so there's a company in Michigan called Holland Bowl Mill, and they make these beautiful bowls out of different types of wood, different sizes, and it comes with a mezzle loom so that you can chop your yeah, salad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Kind of like uh, chopped salad. Yeah. So you you're, you're not doing really bowls like that. Would would you would you consider doing that? I, I'd love an Esselstyn bowl. Uh, <laughs> sure. Can we talk you into a dining room table? <laughs> yeah. I had known before. I had just oh, that, that that is amazing. Yeah. The, the work is. Yeah. How did you guys learn how to do this? Um. Well, after college, I uh, I went up to Vermont with my then girlfriend, my now wife, and you know, where she went to medical school, and I got a job as a carpenter. So. I began learning tools and design and building then after college and uh, on and off over the years have stuck with it. And uh, that's really how that came about for me through, through the carpentry, through building houses. Yeah. Nice. And what about you, Zeb? Uh, I did a lot of building out in California when I was living out there. Um, yeah. So. I didn't but, really. But really it's self-taught, you know, it's reading. Yeah. If you, if you enjoy reading and have, curiosity you can teach yourself almost anything uh but then you got to go do it yeah <laughs> doing it yeah yeah okay. this has definitely been a quixotic adventure because the idea of tapping into the urban forest um is new it was new and um, this is but this is like in 2009 it was still very new i mean you know i think as as we said you know it's it really is like vegetarian or veganism was in the 70s you know it's it's very it's not like there's no big companies out there doing this. It's not national. It's very local. Um, and so there's a lot of small enterprises, you know, doing this around the country now. We're a lot more than were even 10 years ago. Yeah. I didn't realize you ever lived in California. Where in California did you live? Oh, I lived in uh, a few a few places. I lived in LA, lived in outside in the mountains outside of Santa Cruz. And I used to live up in uh, Humboldt. Well, how'd you guys end up in Connecticut? Well, uh, I moved here after, oddly, after uh, living in Cleveland. Um, after my stint in Vermont as a carpenter, I went to Cleveland where I went to medical school. And I graduated and got my MD in Cleveland. Came to Connecticut to do my family practice internship. Uh, and then after my internship here, I left medicine. And uh, well, we stayed here. My wife continued her OB practice. And that's how I've come to be in Connecticut. Uh, and then I, I actually, I was living in New York uh, in 2009. And that's when Ted and I started talking about the possibility of city bench. And when 
we actually did an RFP with the city of New Haven and they actually, and they agreed to change the way they cut their trees for us. Um, and so we moved to New Haven, my wife and I. That's so cool that you guys get to work together. There's a, a question in the chat. What type of trees in particular do you harvest from the urban forest? Well, we're sort of at the whim of what comes, what needs to come down. We don't actually uh, choose what comes down. You know, if there's um, a construction project happening, uh, you know, right now there's development going on in New Haven, they're taking down a number of trees. So we're utilizing whatever they can provide with us, provide us, and then we'll design with the architects or whoever, uh, or the interior designers, whoever we have to, and um, put those trees back in the building, whether it's as stair treads, whether it's as paneling on walls, whether it's built-ins, you know, we've done, even uh, Harvard uh, was taking down elm trees for their Lowell House renovation. And we just milled the elm trees for them mm -hmm. and then sent them to a mill shop. So it comes in different ways, but uh, the trees particularly, we're often using unusual trees, elms, London plain. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, ash, a lot of ash, maple, a lot yeah. of, but around here it's a, it's a lot of oak as well. But we know we also work with arborists. So, you know, for the species that are in demand, like a walnut, which doesn't grow a lot in Connecticut. I mean, there is walnut here. So we'll work with the arborists to, uh, to get that when they have to remove uh, walnuts for whatever reason. So. Are there some trees you just can't work with? Like I live in the Palm Springs area and all we have is palm trees. Can you make anything yeah. out of those? I don't, I, I don't know. No, it's a bit like, like cottonwood too, yeah. you know, it's tough. Yeah. They're not, um, we like to, we kind of like to break the rules and, and yeah. um, the myth that only, you know, walnut, maple, and oak are good furniture grade woods. But um, so we're use, we'll use almost anything. We've made tables from basswood, you know, very soft woods, but we find things like cottonwood, ginkgo, and I'm sure palm. Yeah, they're just so soft. They're almost, yeah. um, they're difficult to use for what we enjoy making, yeah. which are surfaces, um, whether it's to sit on or eat on or. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. What's the most unusual piece of furniture either of you have ever made? Most unusual? Well, we almost just, uh, that wouldn't have been a piece of furniture though. Um, we almost just built a 30 foot tall tree in a nature center um, that was going to be shingled with trees from all over the state, you know, different wood species. And the, the roots of the tree were gonna be the reception desk for the nature center. Mm. Um, but now we're redesigning, it's gonna be a little less, uh, not quite so extravagant, but we're still hoping to work there. Um, but that, um, that would have been, been the most, very, most very unusual. Cool. <laughs> uh, very cool. But we did at Newman's own uh, headquarters in, in Westport, Connecticut, we did a three-story wall made from 21 species of wood from all over the state, uh, all this urban reclaimed wood. And that was a spectacular, especially before they put the steel stair structure in, you know, you were just looking up 30 feet at this medley of wood from all over and it was beautiful. Um, and it still is. <laughs> so that was, <laughs> that was an, um, that was a good job. Yeah, that was a good job. Mandy wants to know, what do you guys like most about working with each other and which one of you is more bossy? It depends uh, <laughs> on the day about who's the boss here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I'll be the first to say it's not always easy working with a sibling, but, yeah. um, but at times there's no one yeah, else you'd rather have by your side. And uh, yeah. so I think that in the end, there's a, I don't think there's a, who knows, maybe there's a balance, but there's, um, <laughs> it, it's great. At times it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. And at times we can be at each other's throats. Nice. Well, Susan, that's, when the, that's when the stronger one usually wins, right? That's right. Yeah. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> Susan says, so happy to hear you reusing and repurposing valuable wood. And yeah. there's a question. Can, can Ann tell you guys apart on the phone? Because the Esselstyns, you guys have a similar voice. Absolutely. I've heard that said too. Have you? Yeah. I've never heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. The first word. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know she I didn't know you were still there. <laughs> <laughs> we better not talk about Ann. She's that's there. Like, that's, that's like... So that's like talking on the phone with a with a friend when we were like younger, and you, suddenly you hear her voice. Come That's funny. <laughs> so your mom's a fantastic cook. What what do you what is what are your favorite Ann meals? No, no, I I can you hear me? Uh, yes, okay. absolutely. Ask them, J, AJ, ask them what they cook because they are the great cooks. Okay, yeah. I'll ask both questions. What do you like best of Ann's, and what do you guys make? <laughs> spectacular. I 
love all of Ann's huge bean salads. Yes. When there's just an enormous bowl that, you know, you think we can't possibly eat all this. <laughs> and of I, course, by the end, it's all eaten. And I love the, yeah, I love those bean salads, but also the open face sandwiches on the yeah. um, Metamocker, Mestamocker. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nobody those cares more about making those sandwiches. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Those are the best. And especially, I used to love them when we'd have, you'd cut whole lemons, yeah, the rind yeah, yeah, and everything, yeah, yeah. seeds, yeah. rind, kale. That was good. Uh, hummus and all those special, uh, what was that? You have kettle special... sandwiches. No, but, oh, no, yeah. the little thing but you'd what's sprinkle the sprinkle? What's lemon, the uh, zest? Mrs. Dash. Lemon pepper. Lemon pepper. McCormick yeah. lemon pepper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but only you take the time to properly make that toasty enough, that bread, because it takes forever to cook that bread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Are there any funny stories you can tell us about growing up Esselstyn that maybe we haven't heard? I'm um, there's a lot, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, well, there are um, and in, in a number of stories. Um, <laughs> I think that- uh, And Ann's disappearing now. Oh no, she's gone. <laughs> yeah, or maybe tell us stuff about Rip. Dish the dirt on Rip. <laughs> like all the girls you used to date and stuff like that. Dish the dirt. Yeah. I would, wouldn't dare. <laughs> yeah, no kissing and telling. <laughs> all right. Yeah, Rip was, um, Rip was a lot of fun to grow up with. I loved it when he would come. We had, we shared, a, we essentially lived in a big room and outside our room was actually a weight room. Uh, and the door, it was a very open floor plan in the house, but Rip's bed was right. We were lived in the same room for a long time in bunk beds, but, um, then we got a little older, our rooms were side by side with sort of a bureau between us, um, or a glorified wall, but it was always fun because I, I would love it at night when he would come and pr practice his dance moves in front of me, you know, uh, <laughs> trying to go to sleep. Rip was very yeah. proud of his moves. Yeah. And he uh, liked to disco. <laughs> and love the disco. That is hilarious. Rita says, is there a shop a person could come to as you see your craftsmanship? Uh, oh. In Connecticut, we have a showroom here in Higginham, Connecticut, um, right near the shop. So we actually really enjoy when clients come, we can show them um, different species of wood and different leg systems, bases yeah. that we make. Uh, so yeah, it's very regional, but here in Connecticut, we have a shop. Yeah, a check, check out the website. Yeah, it's a pretty robust website with a lot of visually it's really rich and yeah um and then if they're if some yeah if someone's interested in doing something we can always just get on the phone right yeah it's almost almost you almost don't need yeah. a brick and mortar showroom these days I yeah. mean, although people do like to see it and feel it yeah Right. Yeah. Well, Jay, JL is saying, can you show us some more of their work? But you guys are outside, so whatever's behind you is your future work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Norway, Naples. Yeah. Has lumber increased since COVID? Uh, one of the viewers is saying, at least in Canada, it has. Uh, it's tripled, but we don't, we're not subject to lumber costs because we only use wood that we salvage. Yeah. And then we, we mill and dry our own. Judy says, I read on your website, you made something from the oldest tree in Connecticut. Where was that? I think, oldest? I think she may be referring largest. to the largest American elm, which we have used some, no, some of the notable trees in Connecticut that have had to come down. But that was a tree in 2009 that um, became diseased and had to come down uh, just north of Bradley Airport in um, Suffield. Suffield, Connecticut. And that was a massive American elm. And it was on a fourth generation farm. We really enjoyed mm -hmm. getting to know the farmer and we made a bench for the airport. We've got a bench in the Hartford Public Library from it and in the Mark Twain house. You know, Mark Twain being the master storyteller, um, mm -hmm. it was so fun to be able to put that bench in. And Because most of our pieces are really vehicles to storytelling. And they really are. And mm -hmm. that's been the joy of, and you know, Zeb was a journalism grad, you know, went to journal, journalism school. So it just, um, the storytelling has been a big part of what we do. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, yeah, it wasn't the oldest, but the, the biggest. It was, it was the largest, yeah. <laughs> JL made a funny copy co comment. Who chopped down the cherry tree? Was that, is that true? George Washington really did that? that, that... It wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> so was it, was it easy to raise your, your kids plant-based since they were always plant-based? Oh, yeah. No, they, my kids are now 27 and 26 and 22, so they've been plant-based a long time 
they all love it. And I think they really, they all really enjoy cooking. We love it when they're home. You know, we just have these, there's nothing funner than when your entire family is making a meal together. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, it means so much. And I, I think back when I was 22 and I watched my 22 year old daughter making whole meals for families, for, for us, for, um, with a beautiful variety of plant-based, you know, ingredients and recipes. And I just am dumbfounded at how little I knew at that age. Um, yeah. Yeah. Back then. And I, I have a eight year old daughter and she's like, yeah, she is horrified by me right now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, it's great. It's great. She really eats very well and is totally into it. That's incredible. So they never had any problems growing up vegan. Oh, I think that, you know, they all had slight bits of, um, rebellion, uh, but none of it ever stuck. You know, I think they always came back to the nest. I mean, that is so it's, it's interesting. You probably feel this too, you know, growing up in a really powerful plant-based bubble that we all live in. Um, I'm always shocked at times when you step outside that and, you know, whether you're invited, invited to a, to a barbecue for burgers and, uh, whatever, and you're like, Oh my gosh. Who would do it? You know? Yeah, right. Really? Um, so anyway, I think that um, the kids took it on pretty mm -hmm. seamlessly. So I think they had great role models. I mean, Ann and Essie were up front there leading the charge and um, all the aunts and uncles. Mm -hmm. and that's that's what they knew. Yeah, that, that's extraordinary that the whole family is. I mean, like, so Thanksgiving dinner reunions, it's very easy for your family. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, Jeanette says, can you make anything out of driftwood? Um, I mean, I'm sure you could. The, yeah. the, people always love, what people love about driftwood is that beautiful bleached color. Right. And for us, especially building furniture, to machine it safely, we use a dimension most of our wood. So, uh, so you can run it through the table saw or planer or joiner. Um, and driftwood Good for is sculptural. Yeah, you can, but it, the problem is most, once people try and put finish on bleach wood, it loses that wonderful bleached quality that driftwood has. Um, but who am I to discourage someone from trying to make something out yeah, of driftwood? Yeah, go, <laughs> do it. Nice. So Anne said to ask you guys what you cook. So it, it, are, are, you the cook, are you the ones that prepare the food in your family or do your wives do it or is it a family endeavor? And what kind of things do you make? Do you, do you cook from prevent uh, reverse heart disease? Oh yeah, we use all the cookbooks. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. But Truly, when the kids were little, and I, my, my wife's a busy OB, so she was, her evenings and a lot of her nights were, she was gone. So uh, I took on a lot of the task of doing the cooking for the, the kids and for, for us. And I be, kind of became the master of getting back from work myself at about 5, 5.30, opening that fridge and just master of using whatever I had in front of me um, to whip something together. But now it's shared more. Um, uh, now that we're empty nesting for sure, but, um, yeah, no, I think, and it's a challenge, you know, cooking day in and day out, it's a challenge and, you know, Dang, we all, quick. we all find ourselves in ruts, but that's the beauty of uh, sort of having all, all your family around you who are doing the same and you just get ideas from everybody around you. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have an instant pot? No. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Wow. You like might be the two first two people I met. <laughs> no that's i rely a lot on our rice cooker we do have um we don't a have slow a rice cooker, cooker either wow I, I like okay, i like I, I rice is so easy you don't need a rice cooker you don't need a rice cooker? no it's not at all easy. i think I, rice is so I like easy I'm just, I'm just, oh man that's hilarious yeah i just take the bag from trader joe's and put it in the microwave three minutes i have rice you're right <laughs> oh wow oh and I'm yeah. supposedly a chef. And Deborah says, do you guys make jewelry boxes? We have. Yeah. We're, we're making a whole bunch of small, we don't often do a lot of really small pieces, but we're doing a bunch right now for, um, for uh, actually it's a nature, it's not a nature center, but it's a native plant center. Um, yeah. And they're getting, getting a lot of stuff, interactive stuff for their they have kids and tours. So yeah, we do, we can do some boxes yeah. and yeah. That's we did we did one really actually uh, that Korean, reminds me the, of, uh, apple tree yeah we did an interesting project early on for a guy who'd been in the korean war and learned from a, a korean soldier that he'd befriended um 
when you're about um, when your child's born. Yeah. Your child, yeah, you, you, when your child's born, you plant an apple tree. I think it's when they get married. Yeah, which they, is, that 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 you chop it down and you you make. Well, if you, if you have a daughter, if you, have a daughter, you made yes. it into a hope chest. Uh, so anyway, he had us. He planted an apple cherry tree when he got home, or apple tree. And um, when his daughter actually was a little older, when his grandkids were of a certain age, he had us come and take the apple tree down, and we made hope chests, hope boxes for. Um, the kids. Yeah. You ever make a casket? Well, it's fun. No, but we did have a guy who was on, there was a guy, we had a group of people come maybe a, a handful of years ago to our showroom. And as this, this, this man, he was very old. He looked, yeah. and he looked sick. Uh, and he said, do you guys ever make caskets? And I said, no, but we certainly would. And uh, we never heard back from them, but um, we, yeah, that, we that certainly makes, would. That yeah. makes me think of, we had, we have, we often have parties at our showroom and we had a group of um, nuns attend one of our parties and they're actually a really incredible group. It's, a, it's an amazing group. Yeah. They have an, um, they're vocational nuns. So they, everyone has to have a vocation, like the, the carpenter, the, the, the woman who takes care of the cows, the gardens, dairy, beekeepers. The gardens. Yeah. So we were actually having a party that time on surround. We gave a bunch of artists slabs of a tulip tree. we that we were had, uh, and they all made a piece of furniture or artwork from that tulip. And the nuns brought honey from a tulips, tulip honey. Um, yeah. And anyway, we were sitting around chatting with them, and they were actually wearing their denim habits because you know they in their in the shop they wear denim, and the habits were actually denim. Uh, and their main source of business was make in their shop wood shop was making coffins. And one of the guests at the party was an elderly man, and he sort of looked up and he asked him, can I have your card? <laughs> you know, anyway, so caskets, another casket story. I've been asked to make a casket, but I refused it um, I didn't know that. when uh, George died, you know, oh, when wow. a friend died. But uh, yeah, and I've made urns for relatives. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's touching. It's, it's really yeah. touching to be asked to do that. Wow. You know, you mentioned your wife's an OBGYN and she's plant-based. So does she support other people in that? So many people have. Oh, a hard yeah. Time. She's way into it. Oh, yeah. No. And um, she's since, um, you know, starting her OB career back in 95. Um, she has absolutely been promoting plant-based eating. It's been tough. You know, when you're given the, given the schedule of an OB in the office, you've got 15 minutes. But she's really made great strides with it. Um, and gotten her degree in lifestyle medicine. She started something called Plant Lux in Middletown, where we're from in Connecticut, where groups of plant-based uh, eaters get together and make meals. And we showed movies, had speakers, um, called them Plant Lux, and instead of Pot Lux, Plant Lux. And, and speaks at a lot of the same events that you've probably spoken at, you know, whether it's Jane's Conference for Women's Health, uh, whether it's locally here in Connecticut, um, but she does, all she can to promote plant-based eating mm -hmm. through her work. All right. Yeah. Did she deliver her own babies? What? Uh, <laughs> she did have her own she babies, but she, <laughs> she had um, other, who, who was the attending obstetrician? Yeah, she had other other women <laughs> attending to her birth, yeah. Well, she sounds amazing. Maybe she'd like to be on the show sometime and talk about her work. Oh, oh. yeah, and would, uh, yeah, she, she would. She's a treasure trove of information, um, mm -hmm. whether it's, she just recently wrote an, chapter for lifestyle med medicine text on exercise and pregnancy. Um, so I, yeah. Geez. I hope, I hope you'll introduce yeah. us. So we have quite a few questions in the chat, like this one from a Catherine, what is the easiest wood to work with? And what is your personal favorite wood to work with? Uh, I like white Oak. I would say I'll defer to Walnut as being easiest. one of the most greatest ones to work with. It yeah. machines incredibly well. People love it. Yeah. Um, and walnut is a pleasure to work with. Yep. Walnut. And walnut, if you, it, black walnut, it's very dark wood. It's the darkest wood in, of the hardwoods that we uh, use. Yeah. Nice. Monarch says, what do you do with the sawdust? By George. He knows Good. that. But that's a really, that's a, that's a challenging <laughs> question. And believe it or not, we try to give it away, the sawdust to farms or horse farms, but no one really touches it because it often has Walnut, walnut dust. Yeah. And walnut's poison toxic to the animals. It yeah, so. it, it kills plants. Yeah. Uh, so they really won't touch it. 
Yeah. But there is a guy who comes and takes it away for us. Yeah. Nice. Carla says, do you have employees and how many? We do. We have, uh, I guess it would be, well, there's the two of us and three others. Yeah. So. Uh, Rachel says, were both of your wives plant-based when you met them? No. No. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, I mean, mostly, most well, part. I met Ann in 1982 and... Um, you weren't even planning. She was not. And I was just, <laughs> we were just getting started at that point. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's great. But everybody's on board now. So that's amazing. Mm -hmm. oh, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Well, you know, this is, this may sound like a strange question because I, you know, usually a lot of, most of the guests are doctors and, you know, uh, chefs, but people always want to know what our guests eat in a day. That seems to be a very popular question. So if you don't mind, you can both answer that. Sure. So in the morning, I will, it, it varies, but I will often have, um, oh, we, it depends on the, the season, I suppose, but often it's like oats with, uh, I, I, I do like this, it's oats with um, uh, steel cut oats with shiitake and spinach and turmeric um, and nutritional yeast. That sounds like cheesy oats. Cheesy oats, yep. Uh, it's, it's awesome. It's great. It's a good breakfast. Um, lunch is usually whatever I had for dinner uh, the night before. And, and then dinner is often, it's, it's some dish with, it's whether it's squash, you know, greens, some grain, lentils, um, pasta, something like that. But yeah, nothing. Like last night we had azuki beans with kabocha squash, uh, rice, uh, sauteed, mm garlic and kale and uh, a ginger soy sauce. Wow, that sounds amazing, actually. I like sweeter stuff food. I like oats with fruit in the morning. So that's been mainstay for from the beginning. Yeah, oats in the morning it used to be with apple cider. But now we use, you know, the oat milks. And um, I still put a hit of cider in it, though. <laughs> uh, and then, um, yeah, lunch is leftovers. Today, last night I made uh, rice and we did a curry stir fry. So I just used cauliflower, carrots, peas, onion, um, tempeh and tofu, and then just had curry and um, let it just simmer forever. And then it becomes, it's great. Oh, that sounds, and you guys still have time to exercise? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, Zeb bought me, he, Zeb loves to rollerblade. He's the last guy in the country still rollerblading. <laughs> but uh, he actually bought me a pair of 110 millimeter rollerblades, okay. big wheels. So you can really carve your turns, go down hills. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's a good thrill. <laughs> rollerblades. That's cool. And you're always welcome to tip, turn your camera back on because we <laughs> can hear you, but we can't see you. Here's a good question. Has it ever been challenging sharing your plant-based lifestyle with friends and colleagues, either for you or anyone in your family? Or maybe you just don't share it. You just are who you are. Yeah. I, I, hi. Hi. They're telling the story. No, keep telling your story. She told us to turn the camera on. So we're going to Jane, just to dirt, Jane. Hi, Jane. Look, you guys, we're getting like, we're getting more Esselstyn's than we even expected. <laughs> Bye. Uh, yeah, but no, a lot of like friends and stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't proselytize to friends. I mean, I, I some I will, <laughs> but, but no. I is, there, is there a community of plant-based eaters where you live in Connecticut? Are there, are there a lot of people? Increasingly. Yeah. Yeah, more so. I mean, more people are coming and more people also will ask. You know, that's, that's what I, and I, I find. Yeah. And I think... I think when you're when you've been friends with someone for a long time, typically, when the plant-based eating is so important to you, I think usually there's a well, under, you go understanding there. or a shift, and yeah. uh, and it's atypical that they wouldn't meet us partway. There. What do you mean? You mean <laughs> like not, if if a friend invites you to dinner and like uh, I've never had someone not, you know, they'll they'll make something that's vegan. You know. How strict are you guys on the oil? Because you know how your dad is not a drop of oil. Yeah, pretty strict. Yeah. I mean, you don't, I, don't really, don't, don't have any in the house and don't use it. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, so I make these baked French fries lately. We have this fry cutter that I like a lot. And 
I will put like um, oh my God, a cap full of olive oil in like what? probably like 10, I know it's like 10, 10 potatoes. I'll put like a little cap full and I'll mix it up. And that just, it gives it a little bit of crunch more. Yeah. Zeb, Zeb is more. prone to bad habits. Yeah. No yeah. way, Zeb. <laughs> Mommy, Austin. Horrible. <laughs> See, now that's rebellion. That is what an assistant does to rebel. Right. Yeah. It's a tablespoon of olive oil. It's too bad because two days ago, Zeb had hair down to his shoulders. He just got a haircut, too. <laughs> really? That's so oh, yeah. You know, I'm guessing like when people find you, they're, they're there because they want a really beautiful custom piece of furniture. But is there a way that you ever integrate the other part of your life, being an assistant, being plant-based, like saying, hey, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's not, it's not people that you don't need to be vegan to do what you do or an assistant, but you are. And I'm wondering if that ever comes up when people are, are ordering. I, I tried to encourage them sometimes to say, why don't we call ourselves vegan furniture makers? And he just makes fun of that. Said, <laughs> although, although, although guys who work for us, most of them have become or were vegan. Oh yeah. No, I buy that. We probably had 15, 16 different employees over the years. And I would say, I would say almost every one of them, in the end, took on in the end took on uh, plant based lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. So, or just like if you have a customer say, "Hey, if your LDL is under 75, 10 percent discount." Something like that. <laughs> Never thought of that one. That's good. We did, it, we it, have had a couple. We have had a couple clients who who not even knowing they just were like Googled us after they were going to do something with us and yeah. like and then they became vegan just by seeing their search results and SE. That is amazing. Well, I was going to say, if you're going to use oil, this is probably the best brand. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you see, this one has actually got Dr. Essison's picture on the front and the back. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. That's hilarious. <laughs> of course, you know, it's, it's, it's not real. On the shelf. <laughs> yeah, look at Ann. Very, yeah. very disapproving. <laughs> what, are you, what are you most proud of, of your parents? Perseverance. Pers persistence. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's been a long road for, for, for them, for sure. I mean, it's, it's, it really is remarkable. It's like now that they're like, it's 40, almost 40 years in, you know? And I think, you know, it's interesting because when most um, people get into their mid to late eighties, you know, life's come, sometimes come to close in a little bit. And, but theirs is still so expansive. And I think as a, to see that uh, is so inspiring that they're still so giving of their time, their knowledge. Did you guys ever want to be Olympic athletes growing up? Yeah, yeah we all were, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no we in, all in, swam. in the sense that we were all swimmers and we were all accomplished swimmers. Mm -hmm. And I think worked it to the best of our ability. Yeah, yeah, I think we were all felt really good about where we are as athletes and where we are now. I mean, it's a life, it's a lifetime. Yeah. You realize, you know, going for it in high school and college, it's just such a small portion of your life, but there's still a, a whole lifetime of athleticism and competing ahead of you mm -hmm. and improving. That is so cool. Does it bother you when people like, I, I don't see this as much with Essie because he's such a gentleman, but there are people like that will, will, you know, will say things like, you know, that are not correct or maybe about him. And like, it hurts my heart when anybody says anything bad about your dad. You want to just punch him? <laughs> You've got to let that beat roll yeah. right off. Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. Well, any, any funny stuff? Like, was it hard? You know, you, it was three boys and Jane. So I think you said the order was Rip, Ted, Jane, Zep, right? Yeah. So it. Was, was it was it was was it was Jane treated differently because she was a girl? Um, I don't know. Jane, are you there still? <laughs> I don't know if she was treated differently. She had her own room. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that's special. <laughs> right? And she had she she had like what she had the only closing door. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there weren't many doors in the house, but Jane had one of them. They all had these peninsula type rooms, just three walls. <laughs> and uh, and I had a door. <laughs> That's true. That is so funny. So all you, know, you were all, you were all you know, savage athletes growing up. I mean, it was and honestly, Jane was mistaken as one of the boys for the first, you know, 10 years of her life. So that wasn't, yeah. maybe wasn't that We bad. all had the same bowl cut. 
Yeah, we were like the Beatles. We were like the Beatles with these like yeah. actually straight hair back then. It's so funny. <laughs> Look. Oh, what was that? I didn't see it, Zeb. It was, you have to talk to activate it. There, there. Hold on. There. there no. That's oh, the, that's, that's, that's the haircut. Jane or Zeb. That could have been any of us. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is funny. Any, any. So, did, did you guys get along really well, or were there fights? It was Rip and Ted and Jane and Zeb. And I don't think Zeb always loved having me as his partner in crime, but we all did things all together all the time. They did a yeah. lot more fighting than I did. Physical fighting. But, it was, yeah. We just wrestled like bears. It was all yeah, friendly a lot combat. Of wrestling. Yeah. Uh, and you must be so, oh, there she goes away. Where'd she go? <laughs> oh, well. well, it was fun having her on while she was there. Yeah. <laughs> there she's back. And you must be so proud of all your kids, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> your, mom is, your mom is hilarious. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there I just can't there. imagine how fun it must be at your house for holidays. <laughs> yeah. I once got a card. Many, many years ago, I got a, a holiday card from Ann, and you all were wearing T-shirts that said, Eat More Kale. Yeah, oh yeah, that was that was a good year. Oh, right, that, that was a while ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's how long I've known your mom. I think probably almost fifteen years. So, Anne, have you already reported to Essie that Zeb is having occasionally a tablespoon of oil? Has has Essie uh, gotten that information? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, because we 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 I expect a phone call from him. And like, this is Dr. <laughs> Russellston, you know, with his with his voice, you know. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, this is good. Well, it was so great meeting you guys. Thank you. So, and I really would love to meet your wife and have her on the show and talk about plant-based pregnancy. Anne is amazing. She, she's the reason I, I started my conferences, my annual conferences for women, because I knew I had this superstar of information in Ann Bingham and her experience for decades and decades being plant-based, OBGYN, women, all phases of, 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 of womanhood, you know, from pregnancy to menopause and beyond and in between. Right, I'd love to. Are there any other hidden Esselstyns that we don't know about, Anne? All of them. Yeah. Zeb's wife, Polly, Polly. is amazing. And Stunning. I, she, um, I think she single-handedly has raised the most plant-based child of all of our kids. I mean, I say single-handedly because she and Zeb together have raised this adorable kiddo who... Um, I don't know. Polly just did more research and information. She She's a researcher. Going. She she tells all the businesses in the world how to be better. Well, Is that right, Sam? <laughs> That's right. She's she's amazing. Um, uh, I'll tell you what she is doing now, though, is which has changed my life. Is she is sprouting everything, and it's so good, so good. Yeah, that it's is changed fantastic. our world. Do you guys get together like at major holidays, like all of you, like all of the Esselstyn children and grandchildren? As soon as they get off this video with you, they're going to come here to the farm and be with us because today is Anne and Essie's 60th wedding anniversary. Woo! Wow. Congratulations. Happy anniversary, Anne. And, and your birthday is like this week too, isn't it? No. no. Next month. Next month, July. That's right. But it's a, yeah. okay. Wow, today's your anniversary. I wish you had told me. I would have sent you a cake. I did that one year, remember? I yeah. didn't try ice. I sent you a German chocolate cake. <laughs> okay. 60 years. That is amazing. That's not even, 50 is, what? what is this? It's, is it, you know, Bye, soon. Hi, Jane. You know how different anniversaries, there is one anniversary that's actually wood. Do you know what that is? Which one? Oh, yeah. That's a good, that's a, you know what, that, that's a good, yeah, it's the, <laughs> the last <laughs> one. one. Last one. Talking about caskets again? No, but is this is this is sixty is gold or I know sixty is something. That's, no, I'll, I'll see if I can look. Zeb's googling it. Sixty. Let me look. That's amazing. Sixty years. I wonder if they're making their kale cake. <laughs> I'm sure that Jane's got something. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They don't even. They don't even give it up. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I just know, I just remember that one of the years of Anne uh, is wood. I just seem to remember that. But I don't remember which one. If anybody knows, type it in the chat. People want to know to eat Rip's Big Bowl. Fifth. Well, we've eaten, we've eaten Rip's Big Bowl since before it was Rip's Big Bowl. <laughs> oats, yeah. oats and fruit and all kinds of cereal. You know, that's, that's just, uh, yeah, that in all forms. And I love Rip's Big Bowl. Yeah. He did, he did a great job packaging that. It's really, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's great. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I'd love to meet both of your wives. They sound amazing because we just love plant-based stories on this show. So, well, so hopefully people will check out your website and when they yep. have need for some really beautiful custom-made items made out of wood, um, mm -hmm. they, will, they will think of you. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. that would be great. Well, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, thank it you for having you. us. Yes, very nice. Just like you're, you're just, you're as charming and handsome as all the other assistants that I've met. So I th thank you so much for being plant-based and raising plant-based children and doing so much good in the world. All right. Well, all right. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all keep right. it up. Yeah, thank absolutely. you so much. Thanks, thanks guys. Right. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at 2 p.m. today when I will be interviewing No Meat Athletes, Robert Cheek, about his brand new book, The Plant-Based Athletes. Take care.